it'll be your last sip of your pour. Um, of your life. Of your life. Welcome once again to Chill Filter, the podcast where we drink whiskey so you don't have to. But you probably should. Hey, you probably are. That's why we like you. Hey, uh, we're drinking Russell's Reserve 15 today. Big deal bottle. Big deal episode. It's going to be great. But before we talk about anything related to whiskey or our lives or anything like that, uh, here's a way you can support us if you haven't already. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. We've been picking up a little bit on YouTube. We love that on the subscriber count. Uh, but we're not even close to making money off of pays per views or anything like that. Uh, maybe one day we will, and it will take you subscribing to our podcast to make that happen. So thank you for those who have, and thank you for those who will. Uh, and that's all I got for business today. Brian, how you feeling, man? Yeah, feeling good. Oh, man. Uh, and, you know, I, I want to have these episodes not always be just me talking about a baby all the time. But um, hey, no, no, <laughs> but I'll I did go that ahead and start off talking about it. <laughs> uh guess how much uh, sleep we got last night mm. i did notice you responded to a um discord comment at four something in the morning your time <laughs> uh yeah yeah that's true uh i was up then uh helping feed emma but she slept from like 7 30 to to like 4 it was good it's a good question it's not a bad question i, I know I, I i was gonna see which way you were gonna take it um mm -hmm. and then uh after that uh we went back to sleep and slept till like eight so nice. sam and i Get got it, like Emma. nine nine and a half hours of sleep last night it was amazing and we feel pretty good today <laughs> Yeah, which is dude. different than how I was feeling. How how I was feeling yesterday. Yeah. Uh, we were supposed to record yesterday, and uh, I mm -hmm. wanted to say that uh, I appreciate your flexibility very much because mm -hmm. uh, had a little get together at my house for Brian Duncan's Parte. birthday. Yeah. Hey, and, shout uh, out to that baller birthday boy. Yeah. Yeah. Triple and, B. Uh, had, had a little. Brian, had a little too much. Uh, four baller dings. There so you go, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> uh had a had a little too much to drink so anyway i was not feeling it yesterday so anyway now, here we are the next day we're gonna bring some puzzles with you <laughs> yeah yeah did you black out <laughs> oh god no no no, no. Oh, i've good. never i've never actually in my life like blacked out mm. now and i was um i was just feeling gross it's yeah, not yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't like hugging a toilet or anything wait were um, you like I just, um was it you were feeling gross that night or that next morning or both next morning next morning yeah. yeah yeah and like uh you know eat a little breakfast but only have like four bites and see how mm. i feel and yeah, like yeah. uh making sure to drink a lot of water and everything mm. and uh yeah all in all i was just slow and gross feeling yeah uh, all day yesterday so wouldn't have been anyway. a great episode brian <laughs> no it would have been brian very would have been blah <laughs> <laughs> would have been very low energy yeah. um but uh so shout out to uh my buddy rob so only reason we're able to record this today hey, yeah because uh because i Cause haven't the courier decided to stop in west virginia on a two-day or uh, second day air yeah, yeah he was taking a little vacation in west virginia mm -hmm. i guess but uh my buddy rob brought a russell's 15 to the That's deal awesome. the other night so thanks to rob for uh getting me this russell's 15 sample so we can both drink it at the same time here now and get yeah. this episode out as fast as possible yeah seriously it's a big deal yeah um i also have never blacked out but i do remember yeah. once uh and this is the only time like i i honestly have like like tr like people would consider my boundaries probably too strong on um drinking uh, but i just don't want to overdo it i don't want a problem i don't also feel great the more i drink um and so it's just not good it doesn't it's not worth it to me in a lot of yeah. like there's so many reasons i don't over drink but the one time i did and this is the only time i can claim i was drunk i was at a wedding really good friend really good family friend and i was spending the night at the at the venue basically mm -hmm. and um and i can't say i blacked out but i do not i remember going to bed i remember everything i just don't remember making the decision to go to bed yeah uh, right, i right. just remember <laughs> being in a, a like a campfire kind of situation and then i remember nice. like suddenly not like suddenly but it was just like and then i remember going to my room and going to bed but yeah. i don't remember like making that decision making a logical like yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's yeah, probably yeah. not like blacking out i mean it's probably nothing right. like that 
yeah. I felt fine in the morning. I had like barely a headache at all. Um, yeah. How old were you? Was, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I was. That was 28. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, back yeah, when I was 28, another, I could see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. If I were younger, these, I'd probably be these days though, not so much. Yeah. These mm -hmm. days, uh, yeah, more and more suffering as you get older. And <laughs> yeah, I was talking to um, Jason Preston when he visited Richmond, and he's like, "Yeah, I just, I just like don't overdo it ever anymore. It's just not even close to worth it. <laughs> like, yeah. Just, what yeah. What got me though was, um, you know, we had a lot of good stuff, and actually, so it was Brian's birthday, and Brian recently yeah. picked up a birthday bourbon. Oh and yeah, yeah, from, and like, an old one from, too, like, 2017. Yeah, and there's That's a crazy. funny story about those 2017s. Apparently, like, um, there was a period of time where it was tanked in some way or something oh, and it wow. took a little long to get to the bottling mm -hmm. line and the abv actually dropped like 0. 0.6 in or tank? 0. 0.4 or something i don't know uh, i don't I, I don't know what kind Weird. of tank or what i don't know what yeah, the situation yeah. was but one way or another by the time it got to bottling the abv dropped a smidge on like some of it beyond so, the label you're saying yeah yeah beyond what so the they like label labeled it and then yeah. afterwards they were like this is lower than the label Yep. So there's a run of 2017 birthday bourbons that have a little sticker on top that have a proof correction on them. That's funny. so the one. Yeah, no, it's really cool. So the one that Brian yeah. got is a sticker with a proof correction on it. That's, so that's kind of cool. Too. It's like probably more rare in that way, you know. I think so. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, and like there was even a press release saying like the states that the proof correction ones are getting distributed to are Kentucky and Florida or something nice. like that. So it's like you know if you were looking for it, there there's the ones yeah. where it's slightly different. And yeah, anyway, yeah. kind of interesting. collector's item. But uh. Had a had a bunch of other good stuff too, and you know, people were like making their rounds, and so every time I saw something, somebody trying something, I'm like, oh, give me a little bit of that too. Oh, give me a little bit of that nice. too. And I didn't have like a, a plan. Like I'm only gonna yeah, drink yeah. this, and that's yeah, where I'm yeah. gonna. I just ended up like a little bit of this, a little. I bit mean, of that. with what I saw there, I'd probably be on your page. I'd probably be spending <laughs> the night at your house, uh, even if I lived <laughs> yeah. there in Arizona. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I saw Saz 18, Eagle Rare 17, yeah. George T. Stag, at least one or two stags. Uh, yeah. I saw a Four Roses limited edition. I saw yeah, yeah. Uh, some crazy looking tequilas that you probably. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we um, then, yeah, we uh, uh, we we all pitched in and got Brian a Fortaleza winter blend from 2022. Were they good? And uh uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And actually, the we were at a bar one time and mm. uh, just sipping through all the Fortalezas and the winter blend was on a whole other level. Nice. Uh, and was I don't remember like what year that one was. But extra Añejo or like was it a certain type or? I believe. I don't know if they're always Reposado, but uh, okay. the all the winter blends I've seen at least are Reposados. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's cool. And it's just, uh, I, I have no notes for you. I, I just remember nah. my general sentiment of like, oh my gosh, I would, like if I, I would shut those ever... notes down, this is a whiskey podcast. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Spinning off a tequila podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah I was like, if I'm ever going to get a Fortaleza, I'm just going to go all in for a winter blend. Cause it was just so much better than an Yeho. How do you think a bottle would run? Uh, on secondary, they're like 400, 350 Goodness, for Reposado. Yeah, for a Reposado, That's but great. an annual special release. And the for those winter blends, man, going into tequila real deep here. Yeah. The 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 Fortaleza guys get you know special casks that that's yeah. uh, they have special unique finishes. Like Ooh. the twenty twenty one is uh, some sort of uh, sweet uh, wine finish, and the twenty twenty two was a Tokai barrel from Hungary. Oh, wow. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and so they they do some really cool stuff for the winter blends, and it that's really cool. puts it on another level. That's crazy to me. When I learned that like extra and Yeho is like, I feel like it's like three years is a minimum so, or yeah. something for an extra and Yeho. Right. And I was like, what the crap? Because when 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 I was when I got Eagle Rare 17 um, in 2015, uh, I mean, this is a long time ago, but me and my buddy Trevor, we um, we basically were like, we found this one extra and Yeho that was a avion 44 and we were like a 44 year old tequila we got to buy it. and we tasted it it was incredible it was one of the best liquors we've ever had and then come to find out 44 represents months <laughs> and we're like oh crap like and it was like a 150 dollar bottle for like yeah. less than a four-year product but uh yeah. hey it was good i'll tell you that that's funny <laughs> i love it yeah. they tricked you they tricked you yeah. <laughs> No, I was like, I believed it that it was a 44 year old tequila because it was so stinking buttery smooth. Yeah, it was good. Nice. Um, 
I oh I bought it. that new Pixel. I get it this week. I'm excited about. Oh that. good, yeah. that's exciting. The yeah, yeah. XL cool. Pro or the Pro XL or whatever the nine. Nice. Yeah, yeah. The um, yeah, and I saw actually. You know, I had even said to you, hey, uh, it looks like they came out with a new watch too, and mm -hmm. they came out with new earbuds too. They, it looks like they yep. did a whole refresh on everything. So I was yep. curious if you bought anything else too. Well, I'm gonna buy the buds. So I technically have every iteration of the buds. Um, yeah. And I'm wearing iteration two here yeah these are the two uh yeah. but these are just one of the ones i use for recording um but they okay so it was sweet this year normally they they for a trade-in they normally offer like 400 dollars for last year's model yeah um this year the pixel xl whatever it's like 1100 dollars um yeah which is fine i basically um get a new one every year and i pay not out of pocket, but I do their uh, zero interest uh, payment plan. Right. And so what I do is like pay it off so that with the um, trade in that I go to zero and I just start yeah. with like at this point, it would probably I would be paying eleven hundred dollars over. You know, I wouldn't be paying eleven hundred dollars because I would expect to pay like what is that like eight hundred? No, no. Seven hundred dollars in the next year so that the trade-in will wipe me to zero and then I'll go back. Exactly. So you, you, the math is crazy if you're not great at math, but it's pretty simple math. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No offense, anyone who didn't catch on to that. <laughs> um, but this year, it's $1,100. I paid down to 400 on my you know, right. um, payment plan thing. And then they're offering or, yeah, $700 nice. for the, for the um, trade-in. And yeah. I'm like, crap, dude. Like, all I mean, I'm getting I mean, that puts me at if you do the math, that puts me at <laughs> I believe $800. I got to pay off. Um, yeah, that puts me at I got to pay off $800, but technically I don't because if I pay off, if my trade in next year is $700, all I really got to pay off is like $100, but I'll just pay the you know the payment. Right. Um, because I think it's a two year plan, but I always paid more, so I, you know how it works. You know how it, works. Totally, it all totally. comes together. People have dropped off, I, we've lost like 10 listeners thus far. Um, <laughs> But, they're talking about Google. I'm out. Yeah, they're talking about <laughs> Google and payment plans and amortization and no interest and yeah, um, and tequila but, and tequila. Yeah, yeah. This there people are like, I thought this was a whiskey podcast. <laughs> They've mentioned two whiskeys. No, um, but uh, but yeah, I'm excited about that. I uh, and it's a classy upgrade. So typically in the past, I'm like, do I really need to upgrade? And then my FOMO kicks in, and I absolutely upgrade every year. Uh, nice, but this yeah. year, I'm excited. It's a really cool looking phone. It's yeah. Uh, they advertise yeah. the AI stuff quite a bit, so mm -hmm. it, yeah, it at least like it's a talk. Yeah, it's an, it's and not just free... like it's, it's a little faster and the screen's a little better. It's like this year, it's like there's a cool yeah. new AI feature. So that's yeah, pretty cool. and you get it free as a uh, with the phone I got. You get the free features for a year. Yeah, cool. So hopefully, going to be better than the Google Assistant, who we were just talking about before this. Of like, Google Assistant has really regressed lately uh in terms of like google homes and all that stuff i'm like dude they need to get back on where they were because it's just not good yeah but maybe they will with the gemini and all that crap so yeah hopefully yeah so um yeah i think that's my life that's my life yeah. my life what is you over. drinking i am drinking russell's reserve 15 i believe this is we talked about this before i think it's batch three 13 yeah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah and okay so so fun story we're gonna talk about this yeah yeah i got i got a fun thing to mention when we do the history on the 15 year nice. i won't tell it now but yeah what do you enter buzzing on i was gonna do the 13 also mm -hmm. um but i decided i have i've been trying to work my way through sample bottles uh, mm -hmm. a buddy of mine uh, patrick gave me a sample of a uh, store pick from trevor's so nice. i got it in my trevor's glen cairn here uh, the, and it is a single barrel from Camp Nelson E. Nice. Uh, but then I dude, also wait. Had... Is that Slugafus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. He's he's got some. He's got some Russells from what I remember on the Discord. He's yeah. got some options. Yeah, and uh, he and his buddy are like big into uh, uh, getting great. Russells. Pay. If it's from a if it's from a warehouse, yeah. they don't have one yet. They'll just buy it always. That's great. So he's got. I don't know. I want to say thirty or forty. Um, That's like probably cooler than like the four roses 10 you know recipes yeah. it's like hey yeah, let's totally. talk about where it was aged you know and see the differences right yeah yeah um also uh poor uh finishing off this sample that i had the camp nelson c um nice. single rick house from oh you got a single rick house 
No, no, no. Uh, oh. Sample from sample from somebody. But you, um, you're sipping a single Rick House. Yeah, correct. It was a, is uh, it amazing? Like people say, it's like incredible. Some of them. So um, I had a sample of the CN, the Camp Nelson C, and the Camp Nelson okay. F. Mm-hmm. Uh, previously the okay. the f was phenomenal the f okay. stands for phenomenal <laughs> yeah, yeah f is uh, for knowledge yeah. uh but anyway the the camp nelson c is good uh, uh-huh. uh i don't know i almost even struggle to call it good compared to like 13 and everything else yeah. i pegged 13 over the camp nelson c okay but i can't but i pegged uh, camp nelson f absolute tippy top i think the f is just phenomenal and have you had the 15 year yet I did um, on another whiskey night. Uh, uh, Rob brought uh-huh. some samples over. He had gotten nice. from someone. Else. Oh, cool! Um, I'm really excited now to try the 15 out of from a extremely ab- highest trusted source here, because the 15 that nice we guy. had, <laughs> the 15 that we had that night, I was like. Uh-huh. I thought the 13 batch two beat it by a mile. Wait, wait, wait. So, so what's the difference between the one you drank now and the one you drank then, or the one you're drinking today versus that one? Uh, that one, we didn't see them pour it. Not a hundred percent sure we can trust that that gotcha. dude actually gave us Russell's 15. Gotcha. Uh, but I can trust that this dude sitting across from me here, uh, poured me Russell's 15. So. Well, technically I poured you that, but you didn't get that one. That's Rob's got you that one. Oh, that oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Rob brought that. Uh, yes. Thank you. I forgot. <laughs> we how trust Rob. Done. That's for sure. Uh, uh, Rob had the bottle un uncracked, uh, and yeah, we yeah. we literally opened that bottle nice. right here at my house, it. and uh-huh. and I poured a sample from it. I took the yeah. neck pour. <gasps> oh no! And I I haven't I haven't sought out. In fact, I watched um uh Matt Porter's video. Check out ADHD whiskey on YouTube. Um, watched his video, but I actually skipped the notes on mm. Russell's fifteen because I didn't want to. But I almost got a vibe that he really liked it. Um, oh yeah yeah he really okay cool it. okay cool. uh so yeah we'll, yeah we'll he, gave it, he gave it he gave it 9.0 he never gives really anything that's nines. a big one for uh yeah. For Matt, so, uh yeah i i watched that video i don't remember really the notes either but i think he said a lot more of just like uh, oh my gosh this is so good uh nice. kinds of things uh yeah, yeah, more yeah, yeah. than more than like general notes but i like uh, that i'm into that all right my my hope i i actually really dig the 13 year um yeah but my hope is that it's better than a 13 year. So we'll find out. Uh, you good? Yes, I am okay. good. Now I'm regretting not pouring the 13. So I think I'm going to walk yeah, break yeah. over and pour break. a little 13. Also. We'll go together. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, yeah. Which batch do you have? I have two, three and five. Okay. Okay. You should do three because we're probably on the same boat with that one. Perfect. We'll do. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back after this short walk break together to pour ourselves some Russell's 13 batch three. All right, we'll see you guys in a bit. We're back. Hey, I wanted to give two shout outs this week. One was semi spontaneous, and one was written down while I was writing my notes. First, the written down one. Shout out to one of our random uh, Patreon people. I named this random one this week, Joel Bradbury, our favorite Australian uh, listener and his wife, Emma. We love them both. And his dog, Cabana. I think he got another dog, too. And shout out to his old dog named, um, crap, what was his old dog? Cabana, too. No, Barley. He had a a greyhound named Barley. Isn't that the cutest name? Yeah. Um, and you know what? So is Emma, actually, yeah. now that you mention it. Ah, good point. Yeah. And Cabana. <laughs> so anyway, uh, shout out to Joel Bradbury. OK, so also, like we mentioned this once before, but um, Brian and I tasted something that Joel sent that he was aging literally in his basement or something like that. Brian yeah. saw the look on my face when I sipped it and he knew that, like, this is one of the greatest things Cole has ever tasted, especially in the single malt department. I don't know if I could outdo it. In yeah. a single malt variety department, uh, it was incredible. He didn't he didn't distill it, but he like got it from one of those Tasmanian single malt places. I want to say it was like Sullivan's Cove or something like that. But uh, that was your was guess at the time, yeah, yeah, 
But, you know, if uh, he's got enough of that, that could be a, a Patreon drink along. <laughs> Joel, hit us up. Hit us up. We'll pay you. We'll pay you good. I know. We'll right? pay you good yeah. Aussie D's. As I'm, you know what I'm, you know what I mean? Aussie D's nuts. But I knew it was Aussie coming. dollars, like AUDs, uh, you know, in the symbols. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, another shout out. I wanted to give a big shout out to a couple. We have a few couples, uh, you know, like, like Miles and Patricia, uh, Tim and Sarah Murray. Uh, but this couple is uh, a great, great people. I want to say one of my favorites, but they're all my favorites. Uh, and this couple is the the couple that got me this bottle of Russell's 13 that I have. Uh, we traded for a stag um, uh, years back when, when I think this was like, yeah, if this is batch three, then it was like right when batch three came out. But uh, that couple is Andrew and Melissa Loudon. So shout out to those ballers. Give me a friggin moment. A loud and clear shout out to those yeah. ballers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Loud and clear. Andrew, loud and clear. Yep. So <laughs> that's what we got on the on the shout outs this week and stuff like that. Uh, yep, that's it. And shout out to Rob uh, for yes. helping Brian get making this, this happen. Um, we've surprisingly only done two episodes thus far out of our 320 uh, on Russell's Reserve. Episode 116, we did the single barrel bourbon. Uh, and that was and then episode 228, almost uh, like over 90 episodes ago, we did Russell's Reserve 13, the one that we're that I am drinking right now. Um, we've definitely done a few Wild Turkey products on the podcast, <laughs> though, including Wild Turkey 101, Masters Keep Cornerstone Rye, Long Branch, Kentucky Spirit, and Rare Breed Rye. We've never done Wild Turkey Rare Breed Bourbon on the podcast. Can you believe that? Nice. Yeah, I can't. I can't believe one. you haven't done that, but you have done Long Branch, <laughs> dude. That was one of it's like it, like could be still to this day the worst we've ever done on this to me that we've ever. It might have been it. like what I was sipping out of, but it was straight gym socks. Um, I get uh, I got a heavy charcoal note on that from okay. forever ago. Yeah, you know it was so very strong early on, gym socks. I remember buying a bottle of that and super early on, super uh -huh. early on, and yeah. being like, like it's not so bad." Yeah. It didn't take me long to realize it is so bad. <laughs> okay, good. Then I'm not alone. Yeah, I was I was like, maybe like the sponge that was used to clean this Glen Karen was like rotten or something like that. Um, but it was so bad. Um anyway, shout out to you know Eddie Russell and and um what's his name? Jimmy Russell and all those guys. You give them good products, but Matthew McConaughey, maybe stay out of this. <laughs> Love the guy. Love the guy. I actually respect the guy quite a bit, but uh not in the whiskey world. Um that's just me. That's just me. Okay, here we go. Uh, but it's been almost, like I said, almost 100 episodes since we've done even a wild turkey product. So let's get into some basic his history on the distillery. Histillery on the distillery. Um, so let's talk about it. So in the 1800s, there was an old distillery. Uh, it was called the Old Moor Distillery in Tyrone, Kentucky. In 1891, a guy named Thomas Rippey, uh, that's R-I-P-Y, who they named a smaller, like the, the or what do you call it? The Wild Turkey Distillery named like a bottle after him, Old Rippey. Um, it was like a small, like three, you know what I'm talking about? You ever seen it? It's like a 375, small little bottle, no, but it's like Old Rippey. Haven't seen. Anyway, later he bought it. Uh, he bought the distillery, Thomas Rippey, and started what he called the Old Hickory Distillery. Uh, they would sell their distillate to wholesalers. They weren't much putting out their own stuff. It was it was very much uh, uh, just what do you call it? Uh, what is that? What's the word? Produce? No, nah, what's the word? Uh, it's like Green River. It's not they they do sell their own stuff, but they like contract or like uh, contract. Yeah, they were like contract distilling. Thank you. <laughs> um and so wholesalers uh such as austin nichols uh not a dude maybe it was a dude at one point but austin nichols was a uh company uh, that sold whiskey uh the legend is that an executive of austin nichols uh took some samples from his barrels uh, that he was getting from the old hickory distillery that were originally um uh that you know basically we were coming out of that same distillery uh, and he took them on a turkey hunting trip and they were so good that he decided to name a brand uh, that he was getting from the old hickory distillery, you know, a uh, lot that he was going to name that brand wild turkey. And that started in 1942. 
Uh, and then in 1971, Austin Nichols decided to just buy the whole distillery. Uh, the one they had uh, been getting their juice from, Old Higgory, and uh, which had been bought out at least once before. Uh, and, be, and before it was uh, bought by Austin Nichols, it was called the Boulevard Distillery. And it became the Wilder Turkey Distillery in Tyrone slash Lawrenceburg. So I looked it up. I was like, where's Tyrone in terms of Lawrenceburg? Tyrone is apparently not even a town anymore. It was kind of like ghost really? town as well as swallowed up by Lawrenceburg. Huh. Um, so don't don't go to Tyrone, Kentucky, unless you want to find some ghosts. Uh, <laughs> and right on the Kentucky River, Lawrenceburg is basically between Lexington, Frankfurt and Bardstown. It's kind of in that middle. Like it's probably like pretty close to central uh, Kentucky. Mm. Um, in 1980, uh, they were bought by Pernod Ricard, uh, the French uh, conglomerate. But in 2009, Campari bought them out. Um, and and I don't know how much... Uh, Campari owns quite a bit of, like, you know, they own, like, Campari... Uh, what do they call that? Like, uh, the aperitif? Liqueur. Yeah, aperitif is probably exactly what you call it. Um, but I don't know how many other brands of uh, American whiskey they own. I just know, like... Wild Turkey is the big one. Wilderness Trail. Do they own Wilderness Trail? That was a recent yeah. purchase, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe a year and or two ago. that was kind of like, and... I sure hope they keep their goods, you know, while they're bought out by Campari. <laughs> Start coming also... out with some uh, yeah, annual limited edition Wilderness Trail, eight year for $400. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was Hopefully our worry. I think not... we talked about this once. It was like, yeah, yeah, because like for, or Camp Nelson was sold for like, yeah, like 400, 300, 400 bucks. And we're like, Dude, if they're going to do that to, to Wild Turkey, what are they going to do to Wilderness Trail? But yeah. we both are big Wilderness Trail fans, and so far we haven't seen anything too crazy yet. So They do so good, such good stuff up there. Yeah, check it out. Right, Such good stuff right up there, there, right in this approximate area yeah. of the wall. That's, a, <laughs> that's that eight-year weed, by more. the way. What's that's that? A, that's the eight year weeded right there. Ooh. You can see the shimmery on the neck right Dude. there. The yeah, little shimmery. yeah, it's goldy. Uh, yeah, it's delicious. It's yeah. very, very good. Dude, that was the first uh, uh, wilderness trail I ever had. Was their uh, six year? Or was it just their? Uh, it might have been their four year weeded. But yeah, it was, the four year uh, weeded is strength. just standard. Yeah, well, yeah. And so picks are always cast strength. Yeah. So if it was cast strength, it was a pick. The non-cast uh, strengths are always bottled in bonds. So if it was 100 proof, it would just be the standard bottling, which is four years always. always and then the they case? have it. Uh, I, I guess I'm not it, sure. The one I had wasn't a pick, but it was definitely barrel proof. But it, that might have been the rye. Actually, it was the freaking rye. I think what Ooh. happened, shout out to Marco and AZ, because he's the one who introduced me to Wilderness Trail. And we got at least nice. two bottles somehow. And one of them was the we did and it was so good and the rye is so yeah. good like they're doing good yeah. things out in danville yeah and there's a special release that's a six year and they do mm. that for the weeded and the rye and then now there's a special special release that's an mm. eight year and they have yeah, that yeah. for the weeded and the uh, sorry i said the rye but i meant the high rye yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. anyway both bourbons didn't both they, like, bourbons didn't they do a really limited release of like a 10 year recently uh, not 10. They haven't gotten a 10. Uh, like if anything, nine, the though. distillery yeah. is just turning 10 this year. I okay, think. cool. That makes sense. Yeah, I think it was a 2014 start. Um, but that's the cool thing about Wilderness Trail is that they also only make their own stuff. And their yeah. minimum age on any product is, is four years. Because their minimum product mm -hmm. is going to be a bottled and bond product. So. Yeah, it does turn into a Wilderness Trail po podcast. I believe yeah, right. when they started the company, they didn't sell anything. For, for four, four years, years. They, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. They didn't even it's try crazy. to make a good on or anything. I know, but they had a really cool company beforehand. Do you remember that name of that company was the uh, the Yeasty Dudes? That's Firm the name Solutions, of the which I still that's remember. It. Dang yeah. it, mm -hmm. which was fermentation, <laughs> yeah, yeah. really. And they were, they made all these crazy strands of yeast, and that was their their main focus. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. check them out. We'll do another episode on a Wilderness Trail one of these days, but. We're on Wild Turkey today. Russell's Reserve yeah. in particular. All right. Where did I leave off? Uh, fun facts. It has two master distillers, a father and a son. The father, Jimmy Russell, uh, has been with the distillery uh, for a long time. Whether it is called Wild Turkey or not, he's been there since 1954. That's crazy. 1954. And he's still running. 70 years. Dang. And he's not retired. He says he loves his job. All these things. You must love your job if you're there. 
uh, yeah that's that insane um and has been their master distiller since the 60s uh, officially the longest tenured but still active master distiller in the whole world in the whole global spirits industry uh eddie his son has been working there since 1981 and has been co-master distiller for the last nine years since 2015 uh they have you, you you know your basic wild turkey products out of the distillery like wild turkey 101 rare breed both of those come in both bourbon and rye options uh then they do a rye 101 right am i crazy yeah, yeah they totally do a rye 101 um and, and they do some special editions like basically like uh what do you call it the master's keep it's sort of like parker's heritage or like ehd special editions where it's like always going to be different Pretty, pretty much going to be well-aged and well-respected uh, from their uh, Master's Keep collection. And going to uh, be a little overpriced. Yeah, yes, yeah. very much overpriced. <laughs> uh, you, I mean, they're, dude, they're stupid. But like, what was their 17-year rye? What was that? Or was it 17-year uh, bourbon? I forget. 17-year bourbon. Yeah. yeah. It was expensive. I've heard it's very good, though. <laughs> oh, is it? That's cool. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're not too fantastic. far off today. Yeah. Um. They all have their own story. Uh, then you get Russell's Reserve, uh, which including like the single barrel rye, single barrel bourbon, six year rye, 10 year bourbon, 13 year bourbon, as well as this new release, what we're drinking today, or uh, even the one before that, they have the Russell's Reserve single Rick House. Uh, I've been wanting to try for a while. Expensive, but apparently amazing. It's a barrel proof batch of bourbons aged in one spot of a Rick House. Um, and then there's what we're drinking today uh russell's reserve 15 year uh so check it out here's the deets on what we're drinking today this is apparently a joint of eddie russell uh as opposed to jimmy russell's work even though eddie russell's only been around nine years 15 year product apparently the the credit goes to eddie russell on this one according to their website uh non chill filtered hey that's Ooh. almost the name of the podcast <laughs> I mean, yay, um, actually. Yeah, I don't want yeah. it to be chill filtered. <laughs> well, you know, I to this day, I'm like, we should have called ourselves non chill filtered, but I don't know how that would have been received outside of the it, whiskey world. That just, I don't know. It doesn't ring off the it tongue doesn't. as well to chill be non chill filtered. Yeah. 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 It just, yeah, it's a little weirder to say non. -chill. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pushing a little too far. But like, hey, yeah. we're chill. We're not filtered. You know us, <laughs> our explicit podcast over here. We're just lighting it up left and right. Yeah, you know, uptight, unfiltered. That's yeah, yeah that's going that's the right. opposite way with this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, One seventeen point two proof. Uh, and funny thing about this, if you look at Russell's thirteen, there is a big thing right there. It says barrel proof on it. Yep, you see it on on Brian's too. It says barrel proof right there. If you look on this label, there is no mention of barrel proof on the 15. really. On the yeah. 15th? Yep. That's interesting. Uh, but it is 117.2 proof. Hmm. So let me just double check that. Yeah, I see nothing mentioning barrel proof on this thing. Uh, so they cut it, which is fine. I don't care. Like it's it's high proof, high age. I don't care. Um, and yeah. actually, I kind of respect it because sometimes they'll be like, hey, it tasted a lot better at 117.2 than it did at 124. You know, or something yeah. like that. Who cares? I don't know. I, yeah. I appreciate it that it's high proof. Like if it were 90 proof, I wouldn't be as interested in this bottle. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so. if we're uh, coming up with conspiracy theories mm -hmm. here, all the batches of Russell's 13 are the same proof. Isn't that a little weird? Yeah. And they all say barrel proof on it? I think so. That's almost weird. Like I believe it's true, but it's almost as if they're like pushing the proof more than the flavor. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Or if it's like uh, they did some, or maybe the maybe the term barrel proof technically means you can uh, do a little something, something didn't, with it in order. To... Didn't Mark Viertaler say something about that? Like, like there is if technically Mark, a little bit of smidging you can do and still call it barrel proof. Yeah, if it wasn't Mark, it was Nick. I'm pretty sure it was Nick yeah, Taylor. Nick, um, yeah, Nick, talking yeah. about like uh, you can add a certain fraction of water and still mm -hmm. call it. But yeah. anyway, it wasn't anything. It wasn't something to like take a 124 proof down to 114 or anything. Yeah, you know? yeah. it'd be so, like one or two points at the most. Yeah. Wild conspiracy theories. <laughs> I mean, heck, dude, like it's weird. That is weird. Like that's, yeah. that happens to no other, you know, even every stag batch is different. Like probably from one to 20 plus they have now are all like yeah. there might have been one or two overlap. 
by one right. tenth of a <coughs> proof point. Yeah, but who who cares? There's a couple EH Taylor Bell proofs that are the same, same oh, really? uh, like maybe batch two and batch eleven or something like okay, that, cool. where the same mm-hmm. uh, same proof exactly to the tenth. Nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, if they came up with some story that was like we really love the proof 114.8 yeah. so, we so we artfully crafted our our 13 year blends to bring with different barrels to bring the abv mm-hmm. to exactly 114.8 yeah. so you can call it barrel proof but you took some of these barrels and some of those barrels that different proofs and blended them together and blah blah, blah. anyway well you think about it, it's like and yet for the 15 year they didn't add barrel proof to the title so maybe yeah. they're just going to go for consistency with the 15 year if they continue the 15 year in the future Maybe they're yeah. going to match that 117.2 as well. It might be interesting yeah. Interesting to think about. All right. Uh, 15 years old, of course. Uh, limited release, as it says on the bottle. Uh, maybe they'll keep producing bottles in future batches, but this bottle says 2024 on it. So uh, you you will not get that on a Russell's Reserve 20, or 13 year. Um, 15 years is a decent age and is a cast rate. Who knows? Uh, doubtful at this point. He would mention it if you did. Suggested retail price, 250 If you were lucky enough to not blow your brains out uh, after uh, the online fiasco, uh, I got lucky and found this in a liquor store within a week after that. So um, nice. Yeah. In ABC, Virginia. Uh, but I might never do that again. I know with the changes to the mm-hmm. Virginia ABC. Yeah. Sucks. So anyway, uh, that's the deets. Let's pour this out for the homies. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Um wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I I, I... Well, blah, blah, blah. all right, go on. <laughs> Ooh, that was good. Yeah, that was a good one. Good yeah, that was a good one. Um I uh I poured mine just a second ago, but um right, yeah, it looks good. Uh the color is right in nice line color. with the 13, understandably, yeah. uh, which is noticeably noticeably darker than the camp nelson c really and the camp nelson c is a little darker than the store pick so kind of just okay. uh, right in line with what you'd expect with uh, with yeah. aged darkness mm-hmm. on, on some of these yeah all right uh you Let mentioned me, uh, go ahead different age barrels going into the 15 year blend and you said 24 there's some 24 year in there was that correct or did i just make that up you just made that up Nice. Okay. Forget everything I just said. For what it's worth, <laughs> the the thirteen year, the Russell's thirteens, uh, mm-hmm. particularly batches one and two, they do oh. have barrels as old as nineteen twenty years nice. in in the oh. blend for the Russell's thirteens. But did you hear about any... anything? About yeah, I was going to ask. Your... Okay, it was just what you I, thought. You I heard. was going to ask you. Yeah, I don't know. I must have been thinking about something else right at the end of year. I swear you said the number twenty four. Uh, it's probably twenty twenty four. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Oh, great nose. Great nose. Yeah, the the uh, color on the video here looks fantastic of, of uh, these pores. He, yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. so, so dark. And yeah. so uh, in this cut Glen is the 15 and in this uh, 13th colony one, I put the Russell's 13 in my 13th colony. Nice. Uh, so you'd remember. Here. Pretty, pretty close. Pretty close. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love an aged Russell or aged wild turkey. No, like I've, I've said this before. I don't, I don't prefer wild turkey 101 when it comes to the cheaper pours. I need to give it another shot. That's for sure. But I love a little bit more aged. Um, what I get typically from wild turkey aged juice is blackberries front and center. Um, yeah. and I'm getting that here. And it's very nice and sweet. It's beautifully uh, sugary, blackberry y, white sugary, a little bit of brown sugar, but barely. It's much more white sugar product to me. Um, really good. You nose. will, I, uh, I just sipped, and you mm-hmm. will um, be happy to hear that uh, uh, it as you the last here. pour you tried. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I think so. I, I think so. Uh, I'll get into that. But, um, but blackberry on the palate. Absolutely. Nice. And I, I, I believe it or not, I had thought of Blackberry before you even said mm-hmm. Blackberry. Um, tons and tons of fruit on the palate and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and oaky, leathery, more oaky than leathery. Um, but the thing that may, makes me think that maybe mm-hmm. just Russell's and turkey isn't quite my jam is I like a thicker palate than this. Uh-huh. 
Um, and there, it, uh, I'm not going to say anything bad because there's nothing bad mm -hmm. about it, but it's a personal preference thing where for me, mm -hmm. the fruit and, and actually, uh, very late in the pal in the, on the finish, I'm getting like a medicinal cherry now too, but it all stays very thin. Uh, mm -hmm. and there's a, there's a good amount, not there's a good amount of spice, almost a little peppery here, um, uh, that if there was just more richness and more thickness to the palate, then it would mm. be in like some of my favorite whiskey territory, mm. but pre pretty quick that experience thins out, uh, on the palate as you're heading towards the finish. And mm. the, the, the way that that thins out, it's just not my favorite thing in the world. Huh? So I just, I first tried the, um, I let my palate cleanse a little bit before I tried the 15. And then I immediately tried the 13. And mm. all in all, I prefer the 15. Um, but I just cleansed the palate once again. And I'm going to go back to the 15. But yes, blackberries. Uh, so have you ever had crown blackberry? Not yet. You don't need to. <laughs> it's not a whiskey, so... Um, but it's like, yeah, really good blackberry notes, but like on a, I mean, it's hot, but it's, it's, it's reads about, yeah, like one, one fifteen to one twenty, uh, totally. what, which it is, uh, but, uh, really sweet. I need to test that pat or the finish that you're talking about, but I didn't get it at least yeah. from my recollection, but I'm going to take yeah. another step real quick. And it's more of a experience thing than it is a, a particular tasting note thing. Cause mm. as far as notes go, this is delicious. Like there's mm. so much Oak here. Oh, uh, so it's good. not, and it's not overly sweet. I liked your call out of more white sugar than Brown sugar. Cause I mm. do totally agree that it is the sweetness comes from like a clean, crisp sweet rather than like a, a, a muddy mucky uh, Brown yeah. sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Depth. It yeah, doesn't yeah. have that depth on here. So mm -hmm. you get some light, fresh sweetness uh, along with just tons and tons and tons of oak and then tons mm -hmm. of dark berry stuff going on here too. So it's, and and I will say also, uh, nosing it again now, the nose is so, this is this is probably one of my favorite noses. I just love the oh, yeah, stewed, yeah. stewed dark berry oaky stuff going on on the nose. Do you ever see um, how... His name Murray, uh, Jim Murray. You ever see how he does his scoring? He does it out of a hundred, uh, but he'll split it up into oh, four yeah. segments. He'll say nose, palate, finish, and overall. Yeah, and he'll give every score out of twenty-five. This is like easily a twenty-four out of twenty-five nose. Mm -hmm. Um, great sweetness. Uh, well, full-bodied in terms of just like those those rich uh berry notes a little bit of strawberry but definitely blackberry forward um yeah Sweet. i sipped the 13 okay it's it's more different than i thought mm -hmm. um and and i uh i i got the wrong impression the the other night uh, uh -huh. I, I'll, I'll pin it on me because i mean i don't know who who where those samples came from but the 15 now it does seem much softer and more well-rounded mm -hmm. than the 13 yeah. and the, not overdone the 13, correct yeah, yeah. the Go 13 ahead. does beat it on the viscosity okay. um but the 13 is spicier and a little mm -hmm. a little hotter than the 15 um and the 13 has more of those pepper notes that um the creaminess really helps round out the pepper notes but I think all in all, I'm preferring the 15 because the 15 just has mountains of fruit compared to the 13. Yeah. The 13 is more leathery and it's got a little bit of funk. And the 15 does not have that funk. Instead has the slightly thinner palette that that tends to fruity oaky. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Maybe I'm wrong by saying what I'm about to say. But tasting them both side by side, I much prefer the finish of the 15 year. Uh, and maybe that's what you were saying was not the case. Um, but almost when you compare the two, uh, the 13 year to me on the finish dies quicker and slightly more watery on the finish. But I don't know if that's agreeing with what you said or not. I think it's not if I were to guess. 
I'll head back to the 15 here in a sec, but the, but the finish I'm, I'm experiencing right now with the 13 is powerful, creamy, peppery. That's the uh, overall take on that 15 or sorry, 13. Uh, and it is lasting quite a bit. So I'm not experiencing a, a quick, uh, finish drop off on the 13 powerful and peppery were nicknames in college, <laughs> powerful pepper, but not creamy. <laughs> Cause that would just be weird. Yeah. It's be weird. Did you pour a little 15 there? A little Can more? we ever talk about this? Do you ever have a nickname in middle school or, or high school? Uh, imposed by friends or parents? <laughs> uh, friends mostly. Nah. Uh, what? No, really, really so. no. <laughs> we weren't a big nickname crowd, I guess. That's funny. Dude, I had like, I had two. Uh, but one, I, I still have one that, well, I probably mentioned this before on the podcast. But one that um, there's only one friend that will only call me Loaf to this day. And that was my nickname in, in middle school and high school was Loaf. Um, That's and, cute. Uh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a fun one. Uh, but my friend Mitch, he lives in Portland, Oregon now. He uh, he will only refer to me as Loaf. And it feels good because I'm like, dude, someone remembers that. And he'll be like, yo, what yeah. up, Loaf? That's cool. Up, man? So I like it. I had one more that spurred from middle school. That was um, Cole. Uh, <laughs> you used to, you know, when you get it's it's similar to that Keegan Michael Key, Key and Peel sketch where you know the the <clears throat> the uh, substitute teacher comes in, yeah, and they're classic. like, "Oh, you faking your name?" That was totally what happened back in you know oh two oh three uh, when I was in middle school uh, when they'd be like, "Is there a Cole here?" And I'm like, "It's actually Cole," and they're like, "Really?" <laughs> and every all, all my friends are like, "Really." And they're like, okay. <laughs> and so that's, <laughs> that's so great. And in fact, when I walked down um, my high or no college, college uh, graduating across, walking across the stage to graduate, you can, you basically hand in your thing and make any adjustments to the pronunciation of your name. And I wrote Co Lay. And they literally <laughs> said, Co Lay Seabald. And they yes. walked down the aisle. And my mom goes, How do they get that wrong? And I told her, like, seven or eight years later that i did that myself yeah. oh years yeah. later oh my yeah, gosh it took a while great. Yeah. i was like <laughs> yeah so they get that wrong. yeah but anyway Cole. i just <laughs> dropped a few drops but what, did you have something to say yeah. yeah i did uh the finish on the 15 beats the 13 okay, the finish on great. the 15 is the better whiskey it is the yeah, more yeah. artfully crafted it is the better experience all around uh, it's different because uh, again, I'll stick with my sentiment of creamy peppery on the third yeah. on the thirteen, and I don't mean that as like that's a very prominent. That's all I get out of it. Yeah, uh, I'm just trying to sum up the experience in a short little quip, and so the differentiator there is there's more creamy peppery on the thirteen, and and the fifteen is just pleasant. <laughs> Com comparatively, it's just. Easy, pleasant with delicious oak berries that just like coasts. I, I think the the length of the finish is about the same for me, but mm. it's so much more pleasant on the finish. Yeah, yeah. So I just dropped a few drops, you know, gave it the old spin J. I have found that it is very similar nose to the neat pour. Uh, that being said, I think. I think, but I'm not sure. I think when I sniffed the neat pour that I still have versus my uh, water pour, I think I slightly preferred the neat pour, but they're very close on the nose to me. But I'm yeah. going to go for the palate. <clears throat> yeah, and I erred on the side of less water here. I think I did about three drops in this guy here, but <clears throat> but um, a little fruitier, a little, little more fruit. Maybe? So good. Okay, I uh, the way that you were writhing around you in were your like, chair. Bruh! No, no, it was I good. Thought, it, was, it was a good. I thought one. you got some down your windpipe or something. I thought it no. went down the wrong pipe, and I was like, "Oh no, he's struggling." <laughs> I have done that before, not because it went down the wrong pipe or something, but because it's a terrible whiskey. Where I'm like, mm, "No." Oh yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, for sure. But this was sure. a good shake of the head, dude. I uh, um, I go ahead. Wrong pipe, man. That happens to me too much. Uh, it is so funny. Uh, I think the very first time I ever drank hazmat whiskey, it was yeah. my thir 13th colony, uh, uh -huh. the 11 year, 141 yeah. proof. 
And, uh, and my, my very first sip of hazmat whiskey in my entire life went down the wrong pipe. And I was not right for 20, 30 minutes Dude, afterwards. <laughs> he'll mess you up. I know. People are like, yeah, that's what they say. I mean, it's so, I mean, you think about it. Like, it's, it's, I mean, it's definitely not like ever clear, but it is a lot of vapors, like alcohol, yeah. warm, high hazmat alcohol, like, is high volatile. Like, you know, and when you get that in your lungs, it's hard to get out especially when the liquid itself gets into your lungs. Yeah. Um, right. But um, oh, go ahead. Water nose. Uh, I'm like, a. am yeah. a little lighter. I'm a little lighter, brighter with the water okay. nose. Uh, I'm almost, the fruits are a little more, uh, to the side of appley for me. Um, and I'm getting a little more like a little more sweetness too. So more sugary and brighter, lighter fruit. Okay. I think you're right. Um, on the palate, on the other hand, it is similar. I think the water didn't help it. It didn't make it a bad whiskey. Still a great whiskey. It reminds me of the 13 year with a little bit of water. Um, yeah. Because it takes as, the fruit away for me. Yeah. It's it's a little less, little less, um, the, the, the beauty of the 15 year neat was that that blackberry note was so well entwined into the whole experience. Uh, it was just, you couldn't escape blackberries in a beautifully fruity and sweet way. Um, with the water, it loosened it up. Still good, but just not as entwined. If that makes any sense to our listeners. <laughs> yeah. the intonation is just intonation <laughs> uh i think that the blackberries almost went away entirely huh. with a little bit of water uh i really wasn't getting blackberry on the palate anymore but um it, and it almost reminds me of like um like a four roses product now like it's um totally. there's a lot of delicate uh delicious oak and uh the the way that it still is thin obviously the 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 palate mm. Uh, doesn't have viscosity to it or anything and the fact that it took the fruit away like it did though the blackberry it took it away mm -hmm. i uh prefer the neat like yeah. vastly mm -hmm. i did sip a smidge of the camp nelson c uh, uh -huh. so just to give a quick hot take on that yeah, the experience please. relative that you're going to get from a camp nelson c uh had some herbal spices to it uh, -huh. uh and and it had more um white sugar sweetness more yeah. sweetness and spicy from herbal stuff on the camp i like that but wait you said that 13 was better than the camp nelson c right mm -hmm. so therefore by not association by commutation right i don't know <laughs> i think <laughs> I hated, property I... tells me that the 15 year is better than the camp nelson c uh, yeah, hundred uh, percent by far. Yes. And I hated that in math where you had to write what pro property, uh, which yeah. law each uh, expression was. That was the worst for me. Is I it transitive? So I think it's transitive. So you're going to have to Google it. I'm yeah. not your guy for this. You don't have a tattoo that explains that it's next tattoo. Uh, <laughs> I was like, Oh no, that was a joke. He didn't react. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was thinking hard. <laughs> thinking math thoughts uh i just dropped an ice cube and you can see the condensation on the glass because it's very humid here in virginia nice. um uh nose is still good it is uh this reminds me a little bit more not as crazy but it reminds me more of a, a simpler product a uh, crown royal blackberry but it's not like sugary like like a crown royal blackberry is truly a liqueur it is some whiskey some like blackberry sugar and not much else uh this isn't like like pure sugar um but it's a simpler product it's much more i'm actually getting a lot more of a candy blackberry note not in a candy rye way not in a hard candy way almost like a you know, when you taste like watermelon candy, it's very different than watermelon, actually. So right. Kind of like a candy note. Yeah, in that way. But not in like a great way. Nice. I assume, uh, I assume viscosity wise, it's still 
kind of thin. I guess I wasn't sure if you ever really fully agreed with me on the, the thinness of the palette of the 15. I actually don't. Um, okay. But I think viscosity turned up actually with the ice pour. Um, That's cool. Yeah. I, uh, I'm really doing this justice here. Okay. I did another smidge of the neat pour of 15 to uh -huh. try that against the water one last time. And then I'll put an nice. ice in the last bit of this, uh, nice. the neat here. Um, ice pour is still good. It's not better than the neat or the water, um, but it's still good. Like I would drink this. I would drink it. Uh, you know, if you let this warm to room temperature, I would still drink this. Um, but I am appreciative that I will probably, or whatever the phrasing would be. I, I am glad that I can probably drink the rest of this bottle neat because that was the best pour. Yeah. Uh, yep. Oh yeah. Just had a neat sip. Very, very happy mm -hmm. with the uh, the neat. Oh my gosh, the neat is so yeah. much better than the water. Yeah. Do not water your Russell's fifteen, ladies and gentlemen. I think. Okay, water it once just to try a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. find out. It'll be your last sip of your pour. Um, of your life. Of your life. Um, Ooh, the ice nose is really fun, actually. Uh -huh. Very sweet. Very sweet. Yeah, yeah. On the nose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of the same deal with the palate. Like, it's fun. It's still good. I got no bad bad notes on this. It just doesn't even close to beat the neat pour. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I, I didn't let it sit in the ice too long at all. I just uh, swirled and cooled and slammed it. Um, Slam it. I did really like the fruit, and actually, I get a, a, a syrupy honey thickness with yeah. the ice that I didn't get what on the meat. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, glad I tried it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, heck, dude, if you're really into iced whiskey, maybe the ice pour will be your favorite. Yeah, right. I mean, it's not bad, it's still good. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, all right. MSRP, Very I'm cool. in. All right, I got the bottle, I got a whole freaking <laughs> bottle. And Brian's got one extra sample I now. I thought of that. The yeah, pool yeah. Sample I sent him, so. so yeah, big shout out to Rob again. Yeah, what a <laughs> Give me an extra extra pour here. Um, would you if you saw it on the shelf buy it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For MSRP, for two, two, um, that's what you're saying. And yeah. uh, I think um, well, so interesting thing out here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, I'm uh, friends with somebody who uh, is a manager at a bar, nice. and. Um, and he said, oh, yeah, shout out to Nana's Kitchen in Tucson. Hey, ooh. Um, so Marco, if you go to Nana's Kitchen, say hi to Marco. Marco. Yeah, um, not Marco and was, AZ. Another Marco and AZ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are more than one. Yeah. Uh, Marco was explaining that the distributors, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how this normally works. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is a scummy move or not. But the distributors were not um, selling full cases to hmm. stores and bars which Slimy. forced they so they would only release like two bottles a week to stores and bars yeah, so on, that Campari. so that it wasn't a full case so that the stores and bars were forced to pay an extra bottle breakage fee on top huh. of since it's not a full case therefore bottles will be sloshing around in the case uh, they there's a little insurance that you have to pay a little extra if you don't order a full case from a distributor. So like Trevor's, for example, Trevor's uh, typically is M MSRP or very close. Yeah. Um, but Trevor's out the door price for Russell's 15 was like 305. Huh. And that's because presumably I didn't yeah. actually talk to anybody at Trevor's about this, but I'm just assuming mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, MSRP is 250. Uh, so add in whatever breakage fee uh, that Trevor's needed to recoup costs because the distributor was doing this de this thing that I don't know how normal and standard it is in the practice, Slimy. but uh, gets it up to about 305. If I was 305 out the door, I'd probably go ahead and grab one of these. But uh, yeah. but like if I grabbed one and then hit up another store on my way home and saw another one, I would I would not be like, give me that one too. <laughs> yeah, but I would be like one and done. If you saw f you saw a full case on the shelf at two fifty, would you buy two of them? No, 
No, no, no, no. Uh, and that, yeah, we'll wait into that was a Brian money spending preference. Uh, yeah. I did really like this. We should get into ratings here. But yeah. um, I didn't like it enough that I would ever feel like I needed more than more than one bottle of this. I have yeah. more than one bottle of Russell's 13, but that was like 160 somewhere right around there. Yeah. 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 What's the what's the secondary for 13? Secondary for 13 is 225 ish. OK. What's secondary for stag typically? <laughs> it's Maybe not down. right now. <laughs> uh, well, right now it's come down so so much uh, yeah. nationwide. Not even just Arizona. Yeah, uh, uh, one twenty five local, wow. maybe one fifty tops wow. national. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy. But what was it before the boom? Before it was like one eighty, maybe two hundred, okay. depending on the batch local, and then yeah. two twenty five, two forty national. So it's okay. come down like a third. So that was that was a that was a decent deal. Me and me and um, Andrew pulled up. That they like yeah. uh, they That's did you fun. a favor. They yeah. did you a okay. favor by oh, giving you a thirteen Chris tag. Freaking yeah. baller, Andrew Loudon and Melissa. Mm -hmm. My my peeps out of Florida. Um, yeah yeah hit us up andrew we love you and melissa we love you guys um all right i have a score i have a score yeah will you go i'll think about it okay i am on the score i'm giving this an a plus i think this is a plus worthy um i think it is uh on the on the numerical score i give it like a 9.35 this is uh, maybe even a 9.4. I'm going to say, let's take split the difference. We'll go 9.375 here. Um, I'm grateful I got this. It is sad that it's 250, but it's doable. Like, I, I don't regret it. Um, but I would regret it if it were like 350. That would be, oh, that's a little too much. But um, yeah. I, like I said, I think the best note this has going for it is that blackberry, but it is so well entwined. The intonation. Um, <laughs> there you go. It is. Uh, I, I highly recommend. Like, if you see it on the shelf, I highly recommend buying it under three hundred. Highly recommend trying it at a bar. Uh, it is. Oh yeah. This is B tech worthy, in my opinion. In my opinion. Yep. Best best thing about trying it at a bar is you can probably also order a par a bar a pour at the bar of Russell's 13 yeah, and have 13 and 15 in mm -hmm. one in each hand. And so yeah. you can try both side by side just yeah. to just to see for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um but uh but yeah, I um I'm like uh I you know, I'm going to stick with my personal preference here. Okay. Uh, I don't want to give it an A plus because for okay. me there are whiskeys that I like uh a, a level above this mm -hmm. but i uh i do believe that this is expertly crafted i yeah. believe that this is extremely well-rounded and no substantial negative comment can be made yeah. at all i think that mm -hmm. it is uh i think it's totally totally delicious yeah. but it's just not as uh thick as i yeah. prefer my whiskeys to be from a uh viscosity standpoint mm -hmm. so i'll go a um, and I'll, I'll definitely go nine point like one. I'll go over okay. nine for this because um, this is absolutely special. I think it is maybe just barely worth the MSRP okay. price tag. It's a lot of money, yeah. but um, but I wouldn't regret it if I bought one. One. So two questions. My first question is, what is secondary for this? Four twenty five, four fifty. Okay. Okay. Um, my second question, and maybe we should add this to our, for uh, maybe, you know, here and there when we break nine, um, or break a, uh, is it B tech worthy? Oh, nah, not no. Ah! Well, uh, okay. okay now hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. This is not George T. Stagg, William nah. LaRue Weller. Nah, it's different. It's different product. This is a good medium in between Eagle Rare 17 and George T. Stagg. Yeah. Um, I think <clears throat> that it doesn't Definitely quite... Definitely William LaRue. Yeah. Yeah. I think it doesn't quite measure up, but it's very close and it fills a gap that the BTAC line does not True. facilitate. Yeah. Uh, it, it fits a mid-proof, uh, mid-experience gap between... 
I just had a great idea. Yeah, I know. I like stopped talking because you looked so yeah, excited. Yeah. Check this out. Check this out. You know how like, you know, the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection sometimes is amazing, often is amazing. Uh, but there are some that are like, all right, you know, this handy sucked this year. Right. Uh, or, you know, maybe this uh, Eagle Rare 17 wasn't a, a kicker this year. So, okay. Think about this. The, the Buffalo Tree, Trace NC Collection is only merely four recipes, right? No, no. It's only three. No, no. Three recipes. Rye, weeded bourbon, and high, or, and, and, uh, yeah, high rye, or like mash bill number one. That's it. Yeah. Three recipes. Correct. Three yeah, recipes. Yeah. And they're all from the same distillery. Check this out. Think about this. You know, um, I want to, I want to say a word. And then you'll be like, oh, I see where you're going with this. Um, but like this, what we're drinking today is in the range of some B, B tech, you know, series uh, right. or like, you know, releases. Yeah. And, but what if there were like a Avengers of whiskeys where like every yes. brand put out their like Avenger? You know what I mean? Like, does that love make it. sense to you? Yes, of course yeah, it does. I like, love that. This would yeah. be uh wild turkeys avenger and like uh you know like george t stagg or william larue weller would make the cut too and and yeah. heck it might be the rest of the nt collection as well but like if there were like a ragtag team of like the best whiskeys of the year and it were like the avenger like we should do a what whiskey would you choose on like what are the avengers uh, maybe we should do that for the chilies this year what were the <laughs> avengers from each distillery yeah. that we tried right, uh, right that made the cut so yeah. Oh man, now you got me thinking too. Uh taking the Avengers, the uh, mm -hmm. the real uh Disney actual yeah. characters, uh -huh. which whiskey matches up with <laughs> the Yeah, what's like Iron Man here? Yeah. What's the what's the Hulk whiskey? Probably like yeah. for, Ooh, that's that's probably like question. Garrison Cowboy or something. We should do that <laughs> by the end of the year, or maybe even soon we'll be uh, like, hey, you know, we're going through our Avengers series. Which one is Hawkeye here and which one is Captain America here? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. We should do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Um, let's let's scooch it over. We're going a little long today, but yeah. uh, let's scooch it over to the next segment of the show that we like to call Whiskey World News. All right. Welcome back, everybody. This is Whiskey World News. So today uh, I wanted to find something that was like Russell's Wild Turkey Newsy. And I, I went to Ooh. each website, Russell's and Wild Turkey, and clicked on their news section. And there's nothing since 2022. <laughs> <laughs> so, so They didn't no, even put out a 15 year. Yeah, no new news from them, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I was like, what else do I want to talk about? I don't know. Let's go with Old Forester birthday bourbon. So um, this will be good, oh, good for y'all to know because there is a lottery this year, as I'll yep. explain here. So Old Forester announces birthday bourbon 2024. It is 12 years old and it is 107 proof. Uh, and it is from warehouses G and L, if you uh, care to know okay. what warehouses it's from. But uh, um, Breaking Bourbon says Old Forester releases the limited edition vintage dated bottle each September 2 to celebrate the birthday of the brand's founder, George Garvin Brown. Brown. Did you know that? I didn't know that's why it was called birthday bourbon. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> birthday <laughs> bourbon uh, will not be sold at the distillery on September 2. So this is how they're doing it this year, which yep. I think is different than previous years. But yeah, it is all lottery this year. So no, mm -hmm. don't don't go camp out, stand outside the distillery this year. Uh, mm -hmm. When the doors open on September 2, there will not yeah. be any available for purchase for just anyone. So you, if you want to uh, enter the lottery for the birthday bourbon, you need to know that you need to be able to pick it up yourself from the distillery. Yes. So uh, the birthday bourbon will be available through an online sweepstakes. So go to oldforester.com. And it is actually oldforester.com slash birthday hyphen bourbon hyphen sweepstakes or just google birthday bourbon yeah. sweepstakes mm -hmm. i'm sure it'll come up uh august 15 through august 21 is your entry time so heck when this comes out uh it'll be august 20th so today or tomorrow yeah. get in there and put in mm -hmm. your entry here if you want to fly to kentucky to pick this up yeah. but uh the 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 good thing about this though is Anyone winning the opportunity to purchase a bottle, you must pick it up at the distillery between September 5th and December 14th. Good, good so distance. 
Yeah, I know. There's like a, what, three month window? Yeah. October, November, December? Yeah, yeah. Three month window for you to be able to pick this up. So like surely, oh yeah, and it costs $200, by the way. So nice. if it, so plane ticket plus buying the bottle at the distillery kind of kind of pays for itself in a way. So anyway, you've got three months to be able to pick it up if you win. So yeah. uh, Google that, put your name in the hat, see if you win. That'd be really cool. I have one thought on this. What's that? You've, you know, signed up. I've signed up. Yes. We should meet when we both win. We should meet in Louisville. I imagine Louisville. Um, Couldn't agree more. I, I imagine it's not their Shively distillery. Um, I don't remember. But, and I didn't write it down. But no, yeah. it's probably Louisville. Yeah. yeah. It's far enough away from my house that it yeah. effectively doesn't matter. <laughs> Shively's not that far from Louisville. We'll fly into Louisville nice. and we'll have a fun yeah. time and we'll hang out with John Hughes. The Ooh. baller. Uh, yes. Yeah. And we'll have in Kentucky somewhere. Yeah. We will have two birthday bourbons to open then, too. <laughs> I guess Hopefully we John wins one, one too. Yeah. So three. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, easy pickup for that guy. Yeah. So. Uh, but that's it for news. Uh, just shooting on over here quick. This is a long episode. What was you know, news? Really quick. Really quick. Oh, yeah. It'll make it a longer uh, episode. Good, good. But what if, you know how, like, uh people put it people like get like fake ids to be able to drink alcohol people probably would put in fake ids to pick up a bottle of old forester birthday bourbon i believe it yeah. and really with as many bottles as they're selling and putting out scanning like, those johns i was gonna say yeah they're probably yeah. just glancing at ids and yeah. probably not even like holding pictures up to faces yeah. or anything like that mm -hmm. dude i would think about it i wouldn't i have integrity but it crossed my mind <laughs> <laughs> I know you got to No bad juju here. You got to yeah. the the wholesome entries are the ones that yeah. win. I know I'm totally making that up. I don't know. Yeah. All right, it's, what whiskey you would know, you choose? I believe the the world is just to some extent. Uh, to, okay, yeah. What we do last week to some extent. Yes. To some so extent. <laughs> on Instagram, we asked you what other channel are you tuning into regularly. We yeah. wanted to know community wise uh, where are we at here. Who you who you tuning into catching reviews yes. on so um first off we pulled just out of curiosity do you align more with brian or cole here where brian said drums and drams cam cole said adhd whiskey with matt and of course adhd whiskey uh crushed it but uh, both yeah, creators ahead. chipped in to the vote oh they did oh i didn't yeah. even look that's fun that's yeah. fun um yeah so uh 85 to 15 percent. so um you know matt's got that huge audience man He's so i guess audience. a lot a lot of people but are tuning in cam's bringing here. it up cam mm -hmm. is bringing it up we got some write-ins though so we got some whiskey drinking panda action and he says nice. he started getting into on the barrel whiskey the husband okay. and wife duo is a hoot i almost Love read it. that as the husband and wife demo duo is hot oh they're hot <laughs> One less o on hoot they are hot exclamation yeah. mark but uh, apparently they're a hoot so tune in the I barrel like oh, on sorry the barrel. on the barrel whiskey okay. paul clarkson 21 he says he's watching bruzel uh, nice. J J O H. We don't know J O. Oh no, that's uh, that's Joel Bradbury, I believe. Did his or no? That's John Hughes. That's friggin' John oh, Hughes. One hundred percent John Hughes. Uh, that's see, his he, there wasn't one. friggin' in the name, so I I, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure mm -hmm. who it was. Yeah. So J J O H. John Hughes says whiskey tube is kind of one note. No one should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> who would Who would watch whiskey tube? Yeah. Check out John's whiskey? channel called Embellish Pod. Everyone, yeah. yes, please do. Yeah, yeah. It, Totally not one note at all. <laughs> yeah. He's got three notes. Yeah, good. 480 Whiskey says SLB drinks. Oh, yeah. and then we got another SLB drinks from Marco and AZ. Hey. Uh, uh, he, uh, but uh, Marco said SLB drinks and the drum and mash, and it's bourbon nice. night. So repping a couple there. Mash and drum? Uh, drum and mash, mash and drum. I'm sure that's what he meant. Yeah, he meant Bro that. Aska Testwasa says, I only listen to y'all. Sorry. Baller. <laughs> so Thank you, thank you. Of course, someone someone had to say it. Thank you. Uh, and another random poll I just threw up the other day. Uh -huh. So I threw up. Uh, oh, he threw up. <laughs> he blacked out and he threw up. Excuse me, I did not, sir. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, guess how many Glen Cairns and tasting glasses Brian owns. So uh, I just wanted to shout out the person who got the closest guess here. And we did get quite a few guesses, but... Uh -huh. Drew R. Tolan. So Drew, Drew Tolan, Tolan baby. He, what a photogenic man. 
Yeah, even Price is Right rules he won here. So he said 47, and I actually have 49. Glenn wait, wait, but Price is Right rules, he would have lost. No, 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 because he was under. No, you got to guess over. No, dude. Oh, you're, you're, right, you're, right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. One dollar, right, right, Bob. One dollar, Bob. You're right, you're right, right, right. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. Oh, that's totally, funny. Totally uh, anyway, Drew, shout out to you. Thank you for voting. 47 was the winning number, and I have 49, which now is a question for the audience and for Cole as well. Mm -hmm. Next week, what whiskey would you choose? How many Glen Cairns and whiskey tasting glasses do you own, Cole? All right, here we go. I wrote them all down. I have 20 standard Glen Cairns. Actually, I have more. I now that I think about it, I just remembered uh -oh. that I have four more, but they're not as presentable. Like they have like um what's the brand? Oh, uh, uh, um uh Grand Marnier. I have some Glen oh. Grand Marnier standard Glen Cairns, but I keep them in the back cuz I'm like I don't want to rep Grand Marnier. I don't so, Did you get those as um did you get those for free as like a Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A friend That's gave so funny them to me. Oh, your friend gave him to you. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Because I, I was going to say, I swear our buddy, uh, your drinking buddy uh, down in Tucson, mm -hmm. he's got some Grand Marnier ones too. And I just wondered nice. if maybe he got those as like a, a marketing uh, media sample thing or it, something. I mean, my <laughs> friend worked for a distributor uh, who gave there it to go. me, so it was probably similar, yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. So let's change that to 24 standard, standard Glen Cairns. They count. Uh, I have eight Waterford glasses uh, that are whiskey related glasses that I only drink whiskey out of. I have four stemmed tulip glasses uh, like these. Um, nice. And then I have three stemless Glencairns like these. I have two Waterford branded snifters, uh, two Copitas, Waterford or not Waterford, uh, Glencairn Copitas. Oh, recent uh, gift have, from the wife. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have one Asian or glass. Uh, I have one Edo Kiriko Japanese uh, whiskey glass. Uh, cool. I have one Mark Kuren Blah from John Hughes, which is basically a Glen Karen with an extra tall stem. I have one Glee, one Wee Glen Karen. I have four large tulips, uh, which are. Um, yeah, just like basically larger uh, these, uh, just bigger. Uh, I have four or two rock heavy tumblers from Norlin, which are definitively whiskey glasses. I have two bulbous tall Glencairns that are like like this, but like extra bulbous and like oh, yeah, extra crazy. bulbous, extra oh. bulbous glass holes. Um, and then I have one Denver and Lily glass. I have one. Or two rounded bulb glasses. I don't remember Dang. what they were. Oh no, no, they're just like this. They look like this, and they're they're flat on the bottom. Hmm. And then oh, lastly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have six Stolzy glasses, which are uh, whiskey glasses. So that How adds up to sixty-four. Decide? Sixty-four. Huh? Yeah. Sixty-four. How do you decide which ones to use? Uh, my favorites lately have been the Copitas. And I will pretty much always, I will at least twice a week, I will use Waterford glasses. Nice. Uh, when I'm doing an episode, it'll either be stemless Glen Karen or um, this uh, like uh, long stem Glen Karen. Um, nice. And then maybe if I really want to mess with things, I'll do a, a snifter. Uh, but snifters often are too strong on the nose. Ooh. So I avoid them sometimes. Um, but yes, there's always a fun use for every single uh, one I have, which nice. I dig. And they're all like yeah, classy crazy. glass to like classy crystal. I don't like yeah. glass that is not crystal. I, I nice. pretty much always uh, use crystal. Uh, so Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. shout out to shout out to me. Your we was from me. Yeah, we from shout Brian. <laughs> yeah, so, um, um, yeah, we want to hear what you guys think. Is 49 enough or is 64 enough or is neither enough or is either too much? Yeah. Um, as <laughs> well as it. we want to hear how many glass and we want to hear them all. Like count all your glasses. We want to know how many whiskey, not cocktail, whiskey glasses you have. Yep. And, and I don't. Uh, 
don't care if you have two Glen Cairns or if you have 200. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we want to hear. Let, yeah, we want to hear. Let us Absolutely. know what you got. I, uh, yeah, my, I didn't really count my breakdown, but, uh, I got a ton of wheeze because, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because like for, you know, uh, get together reasons, party reasons, yeah. you know, if people are sampling this and that, they, they generally prefer wheeze because it helps mm -hmm. keep them not pour too much every That's time they point. pour a different yeah. thing. So I've got like 24 wheeze. Really? And then I've, I, I've got probably about, I don't know, 20 or so standard Glen Cairns. But you and I take a different approach because, like, I love the uh, memora, a good memorabilia yeah. of Glen Cairn. Like, I if I, like I'm on a work trip clear. and I go to the Sagamore Distillery, I want a Sagamore Rye, rye Glen Cairn so I can, like, pull it out of the cabinet and remember, like, oh, I got this at Sagamore or whatever. Yeah. I love the story behind it. So that's the approach I take. I like unbranded crystal clear everything like I, <laughs> that's fair that's fair yeah it's weird i have this weird thing about it yeah you are just classier than i am sir no, no there's nothing wrong with that no i am i also don't like to 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 what what's the word i don't like to um, free advertising take a team what's that oh, okay free advertising is what i said <laughs> yeah or no yeah no well, that yeah i mean that's why i don't like i have a yeti cooler i have a yeti you know glass but i'm like i'm not going to give them the satisfaction putting a freaking yeti st sticker on the back of my car because people pay for that kind of money or that kind of advertisement yep yeah though we did talk about google for like 10 minutes yeah yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. but google's <laughs> this awesome, episode so yeah. was brought to you by google actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> our and, newest sponsor <laughs> and bush's baked beans everyone we haven't mentioned yeah. bushes in a while man uh, that's and for true. the record we sent in i sent in like a nicely written letter to them saying hey we would love for you guys to sp sponsor us and never heard a word back from them. So maybe I'll send another until we get a no. Um, but maybe we should take a different approach. Maybe we should just go straight goofball with it and like propose a whiskey flavored bean recipe yeah. and like just get ridiculous with it just to try to ev evoke any response from them. Well, whatsoever. I mean, okay. So here's the thing. Lovell to, um, <laughs> to knoxville and it's near it's not exactly knoxville but that's only a three and a half hour drive so when we both win a birthday bourbon we will drive down to the headquarters of uh bush's baked beans right on the border uh, near knoxville i forget what exact city it is but um we'll drive down together and we will knock on their door and ask yeah. for marketing department we will cover their front door with chill filtered stickers yeah. and mm -hmm. they, they will be like, know our hey, name only we know the the goo gone to remove these stickers from your door so <laughs> pay up yeah we gotta we got i'm not gonna give up we're gonna get it yeah. so anyway know, yeah. uh, next week we're gonna be drinking uh something very special actually so one of our favorite distilleries as a podcast uh and one of their coolest new releases uh we are gonna be drinking uh D whiskey del bach and we're gonna be drinking their bottled and bond classic Heck yeah. Uh, so it is four years old. Yes, four years old and 100 proof. So uh, keep an eye out for next week. We're going to be drinking something very special. Thank you. A shout out, a pre shout out to Mark Veer Taller and um, what is, Maya, not Maya. Uh, what is her name? What is her name? What is her name? Oh no. To Del Bach for being so <laughs> baller. Um, shout out to them. They're not listening to this episode. Maybe they <laughs> they're are. like, maybe they're really hurt. <laughs> they're sorry. like Russell's. We don't, we don't need no Russell's. Yeah. yeah. Jana yeah. Hoffman, by the way, Jana, Jana that's right. Jana and Marana. Yep. So Jana's awesome. Um, so keep an eye out for next week. It'll be a fun one. We love Del Bach. Del Bach. If you haven't heard of Del Bach, Del Bach is a, uh, what's the word? A ringer in the in the in the uh, ring. distiller <laughs> yeah yeah like well no no they're like uh um, no, very underrated and yet they're getting the sad or they're getting the the reviews yeah. and the uh recognition that they actually deserve these days uh, but they're putting out killer american single malts and they have been for years so just uh, about even anytime out. somebody out of state that i see gets introduced mm -hmm. to del bach they're like dang right. wow yeah i can't i can't believe this exists the way that it yeah. is this is so good yeah so, so if you check haven't checked out. out del bach definitely check them out yeah and, and they ship out of state week. too mm -hmm. yeah all right well i hope um 
I hope this episode wasn't too long, but I hope people will know that Russell's Reserve and Wild Turkey are putting out good products. I hope that people know that Cole and I always appreciate a good sample for the re-entry buzz pool. So yeah. if, if you can see over my left shoulder here, mm-hmm. oh, this entire pile of bottles ready to go here. We've got some sweet new additions from a lot of new people. So shout out, blanket shout out to everyone who's supported us with nice. re-entry mm-hmm. buzz pool samples. And there's a lot coming our way here soon. Yeah. And and at this point, we're probably closing in on 200 in our pool, which makes it much more interesting because uh, we have so many samples of so many good things that we it makes are, it so much uh, easier to forget about what's in the yes, pool, too. Exactly. So thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So even even last episode of the Reentry Buzz, I was like, you know, we have a, uh, a gold seagrass. Uh, sea and you're like, oh, I forgot. we had. And so that's the I beauty know. is that when you have 200 yeah. samples in your pool, it is easy to forget what you actually have, which makes it a much more interesting blind competition. So um, for sure. Yep. So we'll see you guys next time. I hope that our love of spirits lifted your, I hope that I, our love of whiskey lifted your spirits. Like if I, I would shut those ever... notes down, this is a whiskey podcast. <laughs> yeah, right.